Does insulin save lives or does it take lives? We all know that bodies that don't produce enough insulin shut down. But if the body produces too much insulin, it can also be just as dangerous. As nurses, we are often tasked with administering insulin to our patients. In fact, it's something that you're probably going to do basically every single shift you work in the hospital. But when done incorrectly, it can be life-threatening to our patients. For years, I was a member of the code team in the hospital uh, where I worked. Countless calls would come because of incorrect dosage or incorrect monitoring of insulin. And the typical conversation would go something like this. Code team, floor one, bed 12, blood sugar is 20 and they are non-responsive. When did you last give them insulin? About 20 minutes ago. And when did you last check their blood sugars? Maybe two hours ago? So we grab the crash cart and more importantly, D50 and off we go. As a new nurse, it can be especially difficult trying to remember everything that you must do during a shift. When I was a new nurse, I remember just how difficult it was keeping track of insulin administration, blood sugars, peak time, onset times. It's a lot to try to remember. I felt like I was drowning trying to keep it all straight in my head. I was both scared and stressed all at the same time. That's when I wrote down all the insulin peak and onset times down on a little piece of uh, paper that I put on the back of my ID badge. This helped me feel more relaxed and it helped my patients avoid getting into a life-threatening situation. If you want to see these notes, they're over at nursing.com slash cheat sheets. Honestly, this is a cheat sheet that I still use today. So let's take a minute and let's examine what's going on in these situations. Why can insulin be a lifesaver and a life taker all at the same time? The best analogy I can think of to describe insulin and its role in the body is to think of it as a key that unlocks doors. Imagine that each cell in your body is a locked house and glucose sugar is a package that is delivered in the bloodstream to the house and it needs to get inside. Insulin is the key that unlocks the front door allowing glucose to leave the bloodstream and actually enter the cells. Without insulin, the package would be stuck outside, unable to deliver what is necessary for the cells to function properly. Now, earlier I mentioned that a lot of the calls we got for the code team were due to insulin overdose, essentially. Now, why is that? Now, let's continue with the analogy of insulin being a key that unlocks doors for glucose packages. If there's too much insulin, it's like having this overzealous locksmith who keeps opening the door and just throwing packages inside the house. As a result, there's not enough glucose packages left over for essential body organs like the heart and the brain. When this happens, the patient becomes confused, possibly unresponsive, or even worse. Part of your role as a nurse is to be aware of interactions between insulin and blood sugars. When dealing with insulin, this is referred to as onset, peak, and duration. Onset refers to when insulin first starts to take effect in the blood. For example, rapid insulin has a 15-minute onset time after administration. Peak is when insulin has its max effectiveness. Looking at rapid insulin, that would be between 30 and 90 minutes. Duration refers to how long insulin would have an effect in the body. Rapid insulin would be three to five hours. So this is all great, but how do we use these times in our administration as a nurse? The goal is to administer insulin doses in appropriate intervals to the body's response to eating. When the patient eats carbs, they get an influx of glucose. We want to time our insulin administration so that the peak times of the insulin matches the peak time of carbs in our bloodstream. If we don't monitor our patients and the peak times of glucose and the peak times of insulin become offset, we run the risk of our patients' blood sugars crashing. You might see symptoms like shakiness, confusion, and weakness. And if this isn't dealt with immediately, you're going to run the risk of your patient becoming even worse. Don't let this happen to you. And more importantly, don't let this happen to your patient. By using the cheat sheet linked below in the description, you can quickly learn onset, peak, and duration times of the different types of insulin. I really hope this helps, and I really hope that it helps you and your patients avoid those 
situations. All right, we love you guys. Go out and be your best self today. Happy nursing.